Hey everyone, welcome back to Bucky's Customs. Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about G Sender, the CAM program that CNC Labs created that allows us to send the G code that we create in our CAD software to the long mill and enables us to make some pretty crazy, crazy things. So if you're new to the CNC world, this video is for you. We're going to go through the basic steps of using G-Sender. Nothing fancy, nothing elaborate, just basic startup and carve a project. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, before we get started with today's project, I want to say thank you to this week's sponsor, CNC Labs, the makers of the Long Mill Benchtop CNC, just like the one we have here in our shop. If you're in the market for a CNC machine and you're not really sure what to get, go to their website, cnc.com, and check out this awesome machine. You'll be really happy you did. Now let's get back to our video. First thing we want to do when we um, get our long mills, we want to download the software for G Sender. And I'm going to show you how to do that right here. We're going to go to CNC Labs uh, G Sender, and you can find it in the Resources tab under G Sender. And then you scroll down a little bit here and it'll show you the downloads. Click on Windows 64, Windows 32, if you have a Mac or a Raspberry, and download your program. And then once you've installed it, you need to hook your mill to your computer if you haven't already done that with the provided cord. And you should be good to go from there. So you can also go on their website and print off documentation. You can read it from the website. You can give feedback and they welcome the feedback that they get. And also, if you wanted to, you could go to GitHub and you could see the public um, information on G-Center and the progress and everything from its beginning to now. And, of course, there's some frequently asked questions, some popular topics there. I would encourage everyone to go through this page and read as much as you can before you start. So, here's the thing. You go ahead and take care of all that. And then we can go to, um, we're going to close this. And we're going to go over here and click on our G Sender tab or our app icon and we're going to open G Sender. Here we are. We now have G Sender open. We have the 1.0 version and we're all upgraded and ready to go. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to come up here to our setup. And we need to tell the G Sender program what, ver what CNC we have. Of course, we have the long mill, 30 by 30. You could very well have a long mill that is um, smaller than that. If you do, make sure you select that. Make sure you select the proper one. I've already done that here, so... Now, our cutting area. Now, if you go into your documentation for your long mill, you can find your cut area settings in there. But typically, these are correct for the mill that you've chosen. If you want to change them, this is where you change them. Now, if you have a spindle or a laser, you can select that here. You can select inches or millimeters I prefer inches 
I like the computer or the G sender program to warn me if it's an invalid G code and warn me if line detected during if an invalid line has been de detected and that gives me the opportunity to run anyway or stop it depending on where I am or what it is so that is about it there here you can set your jogging preset speeds for precise this is what you would set it at uh, you can change all these this tells you your X and Y which is your front to back is your Y side to side is your X and the Z is your router up and down or the Z height not really sure who Z is but I've heard it a lot so I use it as well makes me look important I guess but anyway our speed is right here and it's inches a minute you can click the normal or the rapid and change all these to your preferences and I would advise you to play with these learn these mess around with it you know run your mill up and back you know side to side see just how fast these are going and go from there now we have a safe height over here which is two inches which I have set for two inches I don't generally have anything on my table as far as brackets or any of that stuff that requires me to go higher than two inches so this is why I have it at two inches you can set it for whatever you want within the parameters of your machine now that's about it as far as connectivity um, it will reconnect automatically that's I have that set here and that's about it now you can go to your probe and you can change settings in here as well I wouldn't advise you to change any settings for your probe because they're preset and they're preset for your long mill now you can change if you wish your fast find your slow find which if you've watched my videos you see how the bit comes down and then comes back up and does a slow that's what your slow find is your fast find is your first move and then your retraction is right here um, the probe connectivity test this is where you would turn that on or off this is obviously on because I use it in the on position okay basically that is it you can add tools to your library here these are all the tools that I've used um, basically it's the you know it's the diameter of the tool and that's how your uh, touch probe determines your X and Y when you use a touch probe for your X and Y that's how it determines where that zero point is it finds the center of that tool and then you've got shortcuts this is all stuff that I have not set up yet I will do a future video on this so we're gonna skip through this I know you probably a lot of you are probably wondering hey can you show me some of this stuff yeah I'm going to as soon as I get a handle on it I haven't had time to mess with it so I haven't you know I've been going the long way I know there's a ton of different shortcuts we can use for both our keyboard and a remote so or a um, gaming controller which I don't have hooked up yet now our visualizer is preset from the factory the way it shows here we have um, a regular mode and a lightweight mode our theme is dark you can change that I would assume to light and I will go back in and change this so you know what it is you can pretty much see it in the background here but let's take a look at 
the next tab which is the tool change what do you want the mill to do when you have a tool change in the G code you want it to pause do you want it to ignore it that's I choose to pause I haven't my um, my software does not allow me to incorporate a tool change in the G code so I have to run a separate tool path for each tool change and then run that in this so that's what I do uh, this is G code I don't know how to write G code don't even have a clue yet and this is about which pretty much gives you the history of how G Center was created and all that so now once we've done the basic stuff you notice I've changed it to light mode I kind of like the light mode a little better here it brightens things up a little bit but um, basically the first thing you need to do is if you have homing switches which I do you would have to enable it in your firmware and this is where you do that I have soft limits enabled which would allow me if you have these um, limit switches you only need one on each axis soft limits enables you to put dimensions or your workspace length and width and height in there so that on the other end when it goes away from the limit switch it calculates how many inches or millimeters that if you're using millimeters it it can go and it will stop uh, number 22 is homing cycle enabled and you know in order to home to have this you need limit switches so okay we'll get into that in the future but I promised you a basic startup and this is what we're gonna do so first things first I have homing switches so I'm going to click unlock the machine and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click home and what my machine does is it starts with the Z and then moves to the Y and runs the X and that determines a starting point for our machine and that starting point is something that is pretty valuable if you need you have an error or something happens you can shut the machine off and restart the machine with that start point and pretty much save your piece if you get into a situation and if you've watched any of my videos like the touch pro video um, the uh, tray video especially that was a Z height uh, error where I didn't have the bit down far enough the material was too low and it couldn't cut through so pretty much uh, that's where I start now if you don't have limit switches of course um, you're going to once you've set up your machine which I'm not going to get into any of that once you set up your machine you're going to be able to start right from this screen so the first thing you want to do is is once you've created your your project you're gonna to want to load your file so you're gonna come over here and load your file and I like to let's see here we'll go to desktop we'll do got a bunch of them in here okay we got a, okay I made this sign a while back it is called the love shack and someday I'll tell you the story on that but it's pretty funny actually so anyway I made this sign for someone and 
Uh, this is kind of what it looks like when uh, you bring it into G Sender. And now what we need to do is, depending on where you started your project, um, whether it was CarveCo or Easel Pro, they all ask you to make a start point. It's either lower left-hand corner, center, you can put it in all four corners, one or the other, or center. And I chose in this case to use the bottom left-hand corner. So I put my stock in and then I would set up and use my touch probe to go ahead and zero on that corner. I would zero the X, the Y, and the Z. And basically all you do is you, if you're going to do all three axes, you select the axis, you select the bit diameter that you're using, which is quarter inch. It's what I would be using. And then you put your probe on the corner of your piece and you hit probe. It brings up a connectivity screen because you remember in the settings I told you that you would enable that feature and this is what you get. If you don't enable it, it won't ask you for that. And if it doesn't have connectivity, it just might mess up a little bit. You never know. I like to use it because it won't let me proceed until I get connectivity. So that's what you would do. You would lift your touch block up, touch your plate or touch your bit. I showed you in the touch plate video, the touch block video. And I'll put a link to that in this one. So you can go there and check that out. I would encourage you to watch that. I would also encourage you to go to CNC's uh, website and check out all their um, YouTube videos as well. They have a YouTube channel. There's quite a few videos on there. They're very long and extensive, some of them, but they are very informative. And it just might answer or click that light bulb on that you've been looking for to help you understand. So that's where we're at with that. From there, when you do an X, Y, and Z probe, all these up here in your location area become zero except for what your retract height is on your touch probe for your Z because that will lift up it won't stay it because if you remember correctly Z is the surface of your material well, for, assuming you set the surface as where your starting point is in your CAD software what you create and if I'm assuming that's what it is, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's where people start. So, it lifts up a certain amount, I think it was 0.15, the retract height. And that's what happens here, it, it will show this 0.15, it will show this 0, and it will show this 0. And then you're set to go with all three so which is kind of cool I kind of like the look of this um, I kind of like the way this is set up you can do a couple other things here you can change uh, your you can move this control area to the left and put your visualizer to the right um, we also have some tabs for calibration which I have not done yet um, I will do a video specifically on calibrating that's something that you need to do and I will do a video on surfacing which is this is a great feature because you know in the past we've had to make a toolpath for this this essentially is a toolpath built into our cam software, which is really nice and uh, very convenient. So you can surface any kind of wood. You've seen me surface projects before, especially the projects for the giveaway, the thousand subscriber giveaway. Please go to that video. I'll put a link up here and enter to win. 
It's a great package. Plus, CNC is given a big old bit package to go with it. So I'm sure you'll enjoy that. All right. So that's it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a piece of material in the mill. And we're going to sh show you how to come down and go right through the process and let the mill do its thing. Okay, what I've done here is I've got a, just a temporary piece of wood in here. And I'm going to basically do some control move. I'm going to move the mill. I'm going to set it up where you would set your touch probe which is right here and I have mine in a handy dandy little plastic a plastic holder that I found on Thingiverse which is a really cool uh, website I'll put a link to that in the description below so that you can go there and and check that out but uh, it's pretty neat how um, if you have a 3d printer you can create some of these things and make it a little bit easier and more convenient for you for your mill area so basically we've got this sign here i've got a piece of wood that's roughly the same length and i'm going to use an eighth inch bit you can come over here and you can put your bit in now you notice there's a little picture of the touch block and it'll show you Basically, you see this is your X, and it'll move to your Y, your X and Y, and then your X, Y, and Z essentially is the same thing, and your Z. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put an eighth inch bit in. And that's what we're going to start with. So we're going to bring this to rapid mode. And we'll move it on the X to about where it lines up. Then we're going to move it on the Y. We'll bring it up to where the touch plate is. And then we'll fine tune it from there. Now, what I like to do is I like to bring the touch probe down and get it pretty close. I like to use the normal that'll get it close then we'll set the X and the Y with the precise and we'll get that sucker right in the middle okay now put our connectivity uh, magnet on there and we'll click probe we'll lift it up till it changes blue here and we'll start And it goes through the whole process, X, Y, and Z. Now it's doing the Y. And goes back to the X and Y point. Now if you'll notice the position that it gives us here is the distance away from the touch block that's one inch or better it's like an inch and uh almost an inch and a quarter so unhook your touch block put it back in your handy holder if you have one and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this bit out and i'm going to show you how to run this job I don't want the bit to catch on anything. I just want it to go through its motions. I'm not going to turn the router on. And so now, once that is done, your bit's in. You don't take the bit out like I just did. I'm only doing it to show you in this case. You turn your router on, hook your dust collection up, put your dust boot on, and if you want to run it with it. And if you don't, then go right over to start job and we'll start from this corner right here just like it's showing a line right there and it will start carving so here we go
now this particular program I created a little bit slow and the problem with that is is once it's created the G code it's in the G code the only way to speed it up basically is to speed it up in G Center and you can you can give it an up to 200 percent and it will speed the process up just by clicking right here you notice it goes to 110 each time you double click it goes in 10 percent increments and you can speed it up to 200 percent if you have a spindle you can change your speed of your spindle we don't have a spindle we have a router so therefore it won't work for that but that is about it and you can see G Sender runs you can see where the bits going you can see where the bit travel paths are all these lines these connected lines are where the mill is going to go next so you know take a look at that and you can determine whether or not you've got a clamp in the way uh, anything in in that regard um, you, you don't want to you don't want to put anything in the way of the mill obviously or the bit so but that gives you an idea of what to do there now I'm going to stop this file I'm gonna close this file out and we're gonna set up for a another cool feature that I like about G Center which is kind of it's kind of neat because you get to set points and if you go up here to where it says G 54 P 1 and you click that drop down you can see there is one two three four five six preset points all over your table where you can set these now all it takes to set these is you can go to G55 and you can zero all these points you don't need to zero your Z because you will do that each time you put a piece in but let's say you have a product or something that you are going to create several pieces of and you're going to start it from the same point on your table you can just automatically go to p1 to 6 whichever one you set up for that and start your product all you need to do is the z from there i think that is probably one of the coolest features for me within g sender what i'm going to do is we're going to set this particular uh, point as P2 now we've already X and Y let's hit home okay sends the mill up is again this is only if you have homing switches so and if you want a known point maybe you could make a jig or something to that effect that sits on your table you clamp that jig down and then you have a separate clamp for the multiple part there was a project that I produced over the summer that involved 150 signs. And I created all 150 signs with a jig that I just took the piece, put it, set it in, and I had that start point. And it was marked on my table. And I set my piece up every time, and it worked out really well. But that's down the road. I understand if you um, if you're just getting started here I know that might excite you because I know it did me so there you go I guess that's about it with this particular thing you're up and carving at this point um, I would say from here I would say try to put yourself at your mill sit down and use the features of this figure it out look at it check what they do get an idea of how 
these all work. If you sit back and think about this, like I said in my other video, it is not um, difficult at all as far as a lot of moving parts. You've got three axes and, you know, to figure something out is pretty limited as far as what you might have to do. So G Center does a lot for us. I will show you more videos in the future as we, um, as I do projects that re require those features. I'm going to do that and I'm going to plan on doing that so you will all be able to get an idea of what G Center can do for you. UGS was the start of my long mill experience. And it wasn't a very happy experience. I had a lot of failures. And I think most of it was due to not having the updated version. But it still did some wacky things on me every once in a while. And it was a little confusing to look at. So this here is a lot more user friendly in my opinion. And I think for the new user this is the way to go so with all that being said everyone hey if you like what you saw today you know subscribe to our channel make sure you check out the giveaway project video uh, there's a link to that in the description make sure you go there and enter to win those projects and a bit package worth almost three hundred dollars so i'm sure if you own a CNC, you can use that bit package. So until next time, thank you so much for all your support. I really, really appreciate it. Be safe out there.